Sergei Karyakin was originally a qualifier for the candidate, candidate tournament, but was disqualified for breaching the FIDE code of ethics after publicly expressing approval for the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine. When you look at the Cold War and some of the US versus Russian games of the past, does politics, the, the, some of this geopolitics, politics ever creep its way into the game? Do you feel the pressure, the immensity of that, as it does sometimes for the Olympics, you know, these big nations playing each other, competing against each other, almost like fighting out in a, in a friendly way, the battles, the tensions that they have in the space of geopolitics? Yeah, I think it still does. So the president of the World Chess Federation who was just re-elected is, is, is a Russian. Like I like him personally, uh, for sure. Uh, but he is quite connected to the Kremlin. Like, And it's quite clear that the Kremlin considers it at least a semi-important goal to bring the chess crown home to to Russia. So it's still it's still definitely a a factor. And I mean I can answer for in the Karyakin case, like I don't have a strong opinion on on whether he should have been banned or not. Obviously I don't agree with anything that he he says. But in principle I think that you should ban either no Russians or all Russians. I'm generally not particularly against either, but I don't love banning wrong opinions, even if they are um, as uh, reprehensible as uh, as his have been. Yeah, there's something about the World Chess Championships or the Olympics where it feels like banning is counterproductive to the alleviating some of the conflicts. We don't know. This is the thing, though. Yeah, we really don't know about the the long term yeah. conflicts, and a lot of people try to do the right the right thing in this sense, which I don't really blame at all. It's just that it's just that we don't know, and I guess sometimes it's, there are other ways you want to try and try and help as well. See, like within the competition, within some of those battles of U.S. versus Russia or so on of the past, there's also between the individuals. Um, maybe you'll disagree with this, but from a spectator perspective, there's still a camaraderie. Like at the end of the day, there's a thing that unites you, which which is this like appreciation of the fight over the chessboard. It's um, even if you hate each other. Yeah, in no, a moment. For, for sure. I, I think for every every match that's been, you would briefly discuss the game with your opponent after after the game, no matter how much you hate each other. And <laughs> I, I think that's lovely. Uh, and Kasparov, I mean, he was quoted, like one somebody in his team asked him, like, why why are you talking to, to Karpov after the game? Like, he, you hate that guy. And he's like, yeah, sure, but he's the only one who understands me. <laughs> yeah, the only one who understands. So that's, uh, no, I think that's really lovely. And I, I would love to see that in other, in other areas was, as well, that you can, regardless of, what happens you can have you can have a good chat about the game you can you can just talk about the ideas with people who who understand what you what you understand